Mutual Broadcasting System presents The Mysterious Traveler. Written, produced, and directed by Robert A. Arthur and David Colton. And starring tonight two of radio's foremost personalities, Chester Stratton and Joan Tompkins, in The Lady in Red. This is The Mysterious Traveler, inviting you to join me on another journey into the realm of the strange and the terrifying. I hope that you enjoy the trip, that it thrills you a little and chills you a little. So settle back, get a good grip on your nerves, and be comfortable, if you can, as we join prime reporter Bill Storm on the strangest manhunt ever conducted. <laughs> Now here's the story, just as Bill Storm wrote it down, when he began to be afraid that maybe he was going to succeed and find the strange and dangerous woman he knew only as the lady in red. My name is Bill Storm. I'm a newspaper reporter. And I'm writing this because I have a date tonight. Big dark eyes and the softest voice in the world. <laughs> Sounds nice, doesn't she? Well, I'd like to believe she's nice, but I can't. In my heart, I know she's the most dangerous woman in the world. And up to a week ago, I'd never even heard of her. A week ago, the day of Rusty Dean's funeral. You know, the big shot. Gambling, slot machines, killed by a solitary gunman while stepping out of his nightclub. They didn't catch the killer, but they gave Rusty the biggest funeral since Prohibition. I was on the rewrite desk that afternoon. My best friend, Tom Jarvis, was covering the funeral. Well, along about four, he phoned in. First, he gave me all the dope on the funeral, and then he started telling me about some brunette he just met. He was always a sucker for brunettes. Bill, she's a knockout. Big black eyes and the smoothest, softest voice in the world. I want you to meet her. No, blondes are more my style, Tom. Anyway, you're supposed to be working. Or have you forgotten? I am working. Listen, Bill, I got a front-page story here. Theda led me to it. Who did? Theda, that's her. T-H-E-D-A, Theda. Like Theda Barra, the old silent picture star. Now, this is how it happened. I was watching the crowd at Rusty's funeral when I spotted a trim little number in red whispering to Joe Nelson. Who's Nelson? Well, Joe Nelson, a small-time thug. Well, anyway, she moved off, and I thought she might be a relative of the deceased, so I asked Joe about it. But he claimed he'd never seen her before, and that all she said to him was... Four o'clock at the Banner Bar and Grill. Four o'clock at the Banner Bar and Grill? That sounds like a message. Well, that's what Joe figured. Only he decided she delivered it to the wrong guy. Well, I sort of wanted to see her again, so I persuaded Nelson he needed a drink. We slipped around the corner here to the Banner Bar and Grill, and sure enough, she was here waiting for us. Now, Tom, watch yourself. Bill, you've got the wrong idea. She's a perfect lady. Yeah. Now, what about that big story you claimed you had? Oh, well, I'm coming to that. But honest, Bill, I want you to meet Theta. You'll go for her. Now, look, I'm going to put her on the phone to say hello. Here she is. Theta. Hello, Bill Storm. Hello, Theta. Is that your real name? Yes. Don't you like it, though? Ah, sure, I like it. What's the rest of it? There isn't any rest of it, Bill. Just Theta. <laughs> Nobody is just one name. Not these days. I have, Bill. But here's Tom again. Listen, Bill, I'm going to fix up a date with her for you. But here's the story I promised you. Joe Nelson has been getting quietly plastered. And from what he's let slip, I'm positive he's the gunman who killed Rusty Dean. He is? Then hang on to him. Well, I am. Now, you get a car and come down here. We'll smuggle him up to the office and work on him. Maybe we can get the whole story out of him. I'll be there in 15 minutes. Keep buying him drinks till I get there. Uh, what's the address? It's on the corner of 5th and Spruce. Hey, hey Bill, two men just came in the door and they got Tommy guns. They're after Joe Nelson. Tom, what happened? They just mowed him down. And Theta's gone. She slipped away when they came in. Hey, Bill. They're coming over toward this phone booth. They're going to shoot. Tom! Tom! Bill, find that girl. She knows who they are. She's working with them. I was there in five minutes, even before the police got there. The place was deserted, except for the two dead men. Joe Nelson, the gunman. 
And Tom. Tom, my best friend. Led to his death by a girl in a red dress. Well, the police didn't find the gunman who did the shooting, so I set out to find the girl. To track them down to her. Once I found her, she was going to talk. Plenty. I began the hunt by calling on the man who had been Rusty Dean's chief lieutenant and was running his enterprises now. Nick Murray. Sit down, Stone. Said you wanted to talk to me? What about? Murray, did your boys kill Joe Nelson this afternoon? My boys? No, Bill, they didn't. Why should they? Maybe because it was Nelson who bumped off Rusty Dean. He did? How do you know that? You mean you didn't know it? If I'd have known it, Nelson would have been dead long before this. Ah, I figured that. That's what made me think you were in the clear. You haven't told me how you know Nelson killed Rusty. Well, he had a few drinks this afternoon and let us slip out to Tom Jarvis. Mm -hmm. Just before those two hoodlums riddled them both. A brunette named Theda put Nelson and Tom on the spot for them. Brunette named Theda? Never heard of her. Hmm? I hoped you might have. Trim figure, deep, dark eyes, low, soft voice. Looks like a lady. <laughs> Some lady if she works with a bump-off gang. No, I never heard of her. But if she's working with any local mob, I'll hear about it. Many of the boys run across her. I'll let you know. Thanks, Murray. But warn them, if they do meet her, watch out. She's pure dynamite. Well, that was one lead that got me no place. So next I dropped in on Captain Hughes, the head of homicide, to ask if the police had gotten any fingerprints off the glass that the girl had been drinking from. Sorry, Bill. No dice. You mean you didn't get anything from the girl's glass? Not a thing. You see, she hadn't touched it. None of the liquor was gone. Well, now that proves she wasn't on the level. Well, not necessarily. But I've issued orders to have her picked up if she's found. We tried to get a description from Gomez, the waiter who served them, but... But what? Uh, he says he didn't get a good look at her. When she slipped away, he didn't even see her go. Some eyes he must have. I suppose he didn't even see the shooting. Not much of it. He dived down the cellar steps when it started. He's in the civic hospital now. I'm going out there to talk to him. He must have noticed something. It wasn't much of a lead, but it was all I had. It was pretty late by now. And when I got there, the hospital had settled down for the night. They put Gomez in a ward. And outside the ward, I found a nurse on duty. A blonde kid who turned as I came up. Oh, good evening. You looking for someone? Yes, my name is Tom. I'm looking for a patient named Gomez. Gomez? Oh, yes. Broken arm and internal injuries. How is he? Is he awake? Yes. Feeling badly. Complains of pains in his chest. If he's awake, I want to talk to him. This is police business. What bed's he in? Well, the last one down by the far door, but I'll have to ask the doctor if you can see him. Wait here, please. She disappeared down the hall, but I didn't wait. The ward was dark except for a couple of dim lights. I started for the far end, and then I saw her. <laughs> She was just a figure in a red dress bending over the last bed. But it was Theda, all right. It had to be. I tiptoed down the room. She was talking to Gomez. He was moaning a little. It hurts, doesn't it, Gomez? Yes, of course it does. But it'll go away soon. He mumbled something. And then he reached for a glass on the table beside his bed. A drink of water? Of course. Let me help you. She helped him lift the glass to his lips. And then I knew what she was up to when I yelled, Gomez! Don't drink out of it. He dropped it all right, but it was too late. He'd already drunk from it. He turned to stare at me, his mouth open, and she moved toward the door right beside her. I ran after her, but I was too late. When I reached it, she was gone. Swallowed up in a dark hole. I knew it wasn't any use hunting for her, and I turned to Gomez. In my impatience, I grabbed his shoulder. Gomez, who was she? What did she want? Mr. Stork, you're not supposed to be in here. What are you doing to my patient? I'm going to make a mess. You leave him alone. He's not going to answer any questions for you tonight. And I say yes. I'm afraid not, Mr. Storm. He's dead. Yes, he was dead all right. The only possible witness who could lead me to her, and she eliminated him. And then I knew whoever she was and whatever her game was. Trying to find her was going to be about as safe as moving into a den of rattlesnakes. <laughs> Put in a bad 
that night, trying to figure it all out. And the next morning, when I got down to the paper, my eyes looking like two holes burning a blotter, I hunted up my editor, Henry Halloway, in the city room. Yeah, look at Frankenstein. What happened to you, Bill? Oh, I'm all right, Henry. Listen, anything new coming about those thugs at Joe's Town? Not a thing. The paper's needling the police, but, uh, well, so far, no results. And I won't be either. So we find that girl in red. She's the key to the whole thing. I know it. Aren't you getting a little hipped up about that girl in red? After all, she may be perfectly innocent. Oh, yeah? And how do you explain her killing Gomez last night just before I could question her? Bill, are you sure that you didn't imagine you saw her at the hospital? After all, nobody else did, not even a nurse. Imagine it. I heard her talking to him. In a soft, honey voice, as if she was bringing him flowers instead of poison. Well, that's another thing. The hospital autopsy Gomez and found no trace of poison. They claim it was internal hemorrhage and shock that killed him. Sure, the shock of a nice, healthy slug of poison in his glass of water. But I suppose they didn't find anything. They weren't looking for it, that's all. And I, I saw her kill him. Okay, okay, you saw her. Now what? I want to be relieved of all assignments until I find her, that's what. She's in this city and I'll run her down inside of a week or I'll quit calling myself a reporter. <laughs> It didn't take any week to find her. Not that girl. She got around too much. I saw her again just one hour later. It happened like this. I went back to my apartment, dropped into a chair beside my window, and I started to figure my next move. The window looks out on another building across an air shaft, not ten feet away. Well, I'd been sitting there about half an hour when out of the corner of my eye I saw someone in the room directly across from me come to the window and stand there looking over at me. It was a girl in a red dress wearing a cute little hat with a veil down over her eyes. As soon as I saw her, I knew it was Theta. Oh, don't ask me how I knew. I just did. Standing there with a ten-foot air shaft separating us. Well, I did what I could. I turned so that she couldn't see what I was doing and I got Captain Hughes on the phone. He said he had the building surrounded if I could only keep it talking for about five minutes. Well, I hung up the phone and I turned back toward the window trying to act casual. Hello, Peter. You looking for me? Hello, Bill. No, it's just accidental that I'm here. But you're looking for me, aren't you? Her voice did something to me. I, I can't explain it. But a minute ago, I had hated her. And now I... Well, now I knew why Tom had gone overboard about her. I, I said something, anything, to keep her talking. Well, yeah, I, I've been looking for you. You're a hard girl to find. I have to be, Bill. But why, Cedar? Look, you're just a kid. What kind of racket are you mixed up in, anyway? I'm sorry, Bill. I can't answer that. Oh, but listen, you, you, you could be anything you wanted. You don't have to be mixed up with murder. Then you think I'm a murderer? Now, what else can I think? Last night you killed that poor devil at the hospital. I saw you. Yes, I know. You wouldn't believe me if I told you you're wrong, would you? I'd like to, but I... I can't, Rita. I can't. I'm sorry, Bill. Someday you'll know the truth. Now I have to go. Oh, no, 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 wait. Let me look at you. I think we met someplace before. Yes? Yeah. It was in Chicago. But I can't remember where. Please don't try to, Bill. And don't try to find me anymore. Now, goodbye. But I'm going to wait. But she was gone. And then somebody else appeared at the window. A window washer. He started to climb out on the sill to fasten his belt to the safety hooks. And I yelled at him, Hey, you, uh, that girl over there, pop her. You mean the little number in the red dress? Yeah, where'd she go? Well, she went out just as I come in. Well, go after her, grab her. She's wanted by the police. <laughs> Mr. Mister, I'm here to wash windows, not to chase dames. The police want to let them catch it. Now, quit bothering me. I got a job to do. Look out, you're saying you hope to bend me. What? What? Oh, oh, oh. oh, right in front of my eyes, he fell. Fifteen floors. I saw the safety hooks break as he leaned his weight against them, and then I knew why she'd been there. She'd been there to weaken those hooks to make sure that poor devil fell and killed himself. <laughs> Well, Storm, we didn't get her. 
she slipped through our fingers somehow. She was there, Captain. I saw her. I talked to her. Yeah, she was there, all right. We found a woman's handkerchief in the room, initial J on it. Heavy perfume. Here it is. Hmm. Lilac. Princeton lilac. But the initials are J. She said her name was Peter. She was kidding you. But she did the job, all right. Those safety hooks had been filed away to nothing. One of the local mobs is trying to get control of the window washers union. That's why he was killed. Intimidation. Ah, sweet little lady, that one. But, uh, Storm, the elevator boy who took her up, says she was a blonde, not a brunette. Oh, he's crazy. Her hair is as black and soft as midnight. You're getting poetic, aren't you? I wonder if you're still as anxious to find that girl as you were. Oh, I... Of course I am. And when I find her, she'll get what's coming to her. That's what I said. I didn't know for sure whether I meant it or not. I just knew I had to find her again. For four days, I combed the town for that girl. And then two nights ago, as I was walking home, just about midnight, I ran into Dutton, a cop I knew, looking down the dark street and scratching his head. Hello, Dutton. What's the matter? Is he a ghost? Oh, Hello, Mr. Storm. Now, but I got a funny feeling. I just saw that girl Captain Hughes once picked up. You did? Where? When? Well, just a minute ago, I, I was walking my beat when this dame comes past me, all dressed in red. Yeah, go on. What happened then? Where'd she go? Down the street. She turned into that door down there. Then come on. In 30 seconds, we were standing before the dark door that Dutton said the girl had turned into. It was partly open. And that's the door, Mr. Storm. But that's the entrance to where the first door is locked. Now, why should she go in there? I don't know, but we'll find out. I said, let me go first. I got a gun here. I'll see what's going on inside here. He pushed the door open and stepped into the dark hall, and then I heard him call out. Hey, lady! I want to talk to you. I... Hey, you up there! Put on those foot! Oh! Stop! Who shot you? Was it the girl? No. She was just standing there. There was two guys upstairs hijacking the furs. They... They... Dutton! But listen, Storm, you say you didn't see her. Then how do you know it was the same girl? I know, Captain. You, she was acting as a lookout for those fur thieves. She deliberately lured him in there to his death. Maybe. And maybe not. I'm seriously beginning to doubt if it's the same girl mixed up in all these cases. I think it's just a theory. Your theory. Well, I'll prove it to you. She's definitely mixed up in the rackets. Why now, Nick Murray and his boys must have learned something about her. I'm going over there to find out. When I got to Murray's club, one of the boys showed me up to the office. Oh, hello, Stone. Sit down. Thanks, I will. Can I fix your drink? No, thanks. I just wondered if you'd picked up any trace of that girl I was asking you about. See this? No, the boys haven't turned up a thing. You sure you're not just imagining it? <laughs> That's what the police are beginning to think, too. But I tell you, I'm not. She's real, all right. If there was any such girl working in this man's town, I'd know about her by now. Unless she's awfully smart. And it looks like this one is. Well, I guess I'd better go and get some sleep. I need it. Oh, before you go. Yeah? I don't know anything about the girl... But tomorrow I may be able to tell you who killed your sidekick, Tom Jarvis. You may. When? I won't have the dope until tomorrow night. If you'll meet me around 10, I can give it to you. I'll meet you. Just say where. You know the tambourine bar on 3rd Avenue? No, but I can find it. There's a back room. Meet me there about 10. Come alone. About 10. I'll be there. <laughs> I went home, but I didn't get much sleep. I was too keyed up. About three, I got up and put on a dressing gown and sat down by the window to smoke. And then, behind me... Hello, Bill Storm. I turned, and she was there. I started to stand up. No, stay where you are, Bill. Unless you do, I'll leave. Peter, why did you come here? You've been looking for me so hard. I thought I ought to. Look, I, I won't touch you or try to make you stay, but 
Uh, let me get up and fix you a drink. Sorry, Bill, I can't stay. But I wanted to tell you the time's come when I can let you know the truth about me. You mean you're going to tell me who you are and why you've done what you've done? Everything, Bill. But not tonight. I'll see you again tomorrow, though. Where? When? You have an appointment, don't you, with Nick Murray? Yeah. How do you know? Are you working with him? Please, don't ask me any questions now. I'll tell you everything tomorrow night. Good night, Bill. Oh, no, no, wait. You can't go yet. But she was gone. By the time I reached the door, she was out of sight. Well, I went back to bed. But I didn't get any sleep. I was groggy, punch drunk. I knew she was guilty, but I, I wanted to believe she was innocent. And I couldn't. Well, now I'm going to learn the truth. I'm waiting here in the back room of the tambourine bar. It's almost ten. I'm just finishing up this report that I started this morning. She should be here soon. So should Nick Murray. If she convinces me she's innocent, I'll tear this up. But if she isn't... Well, I'm going to find out because she's coming through the door now. Hello, Bill. Hello, Cedar. So you did come. Of course I came. You believe bad things about me, don't you? Yes. How can I help it? Believe me, Bill, I'm not wicked. Look at me. See if you really think I'm bad. She lifted her veil, and at last I saw her face clearly. It was just as I thought it would be. A beautiful face. With dark eyes that I could see into deeper and deeper. Like looking into the heart of night itself. Now, Bill, do you really think I'm wicked? Oh, no. No, I don't. But who are you, then? What, what's your connection with these murders? You'll know soon. I have to leave now just for a minute or two. Just while you talk to Murray. He's coming now. She slipped out one door while Murray came in the other. Nick closed the door and sat down. Well, I see you here on time, Storm. Yes. If you can tell me who killed Tom Jarvis, I want to know. That's what I'm here for. Two of my boys killed him. Two of your boys? You see, Joe Nelson killed Rusty Dean for me so I could take over his racket. And I saw your friend trying to pump Joe. I couldn't afford to take chances. I had to get rid of them both. And that explains a lot. But what about the girl? Oh, no, thing about her. I think you just made her up as an excuse to come asking questions. No, I didn't. She's real. I know better. Because you did see a girl in that apartment where the window washer fell, but not a girl in a red dress. You saw Janet, my girl. Your girl? She filed those safety hooks and lost that handkerchief the police found. You mean you had that fella killed, too? Little business deal I'm interested in, protection stuff. And last night I decided you were getting to be a nuisance. That's why I'm telling you this now, because you're not going to pass it on. Oh, no, I'll put that gun away. You can't get away with it. You don't... So long, Storm. They won't be meeting again. Peter. Peter. Here I am, Bill. Hey, call the doctor. Quick, you'll be all right, Bill. Don't worry. But I'm your doctor. I... Oh. Yes? I know you know. I know where I saw you that time in Chicago. Yes. I knew you'd remember. No. No, stay away from me. Oh, I won't let you come near me. I'm getting out of here. No, I won't. You're not going to get me. I can get the other. Mr. Thorne. Oh. Mr. Thorne, can you hear me? Oh. Where am I? You're a nurse. Yes. You're in Civic Hospital. You were brought here an hour ago, shot in the chest. A policeman found you crawling down Third Avenue. Oh, yeah, I remember. Oh, nice. Take this down. Nick Murray shot me. Get word of the morning legend. Certainly, yes. Now, please, lie quietly while I go get the doctor. I'll only be a minute. Hello, Bill. 
Judah. So you followed me. You shouldn't have run away. I did it because I remembered where I saw you last. In Chicago. The time I was in a taxi accident, I saw you in the other car just before we hit. Three people were killed. Yes, Bill, you did see me then. And now you know who I am. Yes. Now I understand why you were on when those people died. I never expected you to be a beautiful girl. Why not? Just because people think of me as an ugly old man with a sight, does that make it true? I'm not really ugly, you know. I'm not someone you have to be afraid of. No. I'm glad that you're beautiful. It makes it easier this way. Now take my hand, Bill. It's time for us to go. Yeah, sure. I'm ready. He recovered consciousness a minute ago, Dr. Clark. I came for you at once. Seemed to be quite strong, and I... Doctor. Dr. Clark. He's dead. the secret of the lady in red. Cedar, a strange name. C-H-E-D-A. I wonder if Phil ever did realize those are the same letters that spell death. But he did what he set out to do. He learned the truth and avenged his friends. But if you should meet an alluringly beautiful girl who what? Oh, you have to get off here. I'm sorry. But I'm sure we'll meet again. I take this same train every week at this same time. You have just heard The Mysterious Traveler with a title role played by Maurice Cartman. Others in our cast were Chester Stratton, Joan Tompkins, Joseph DeSantis, and Larry Blythe. Original music composed and played by Al Finelli. All characters in this story were fictitious. Any resemblance to the names of actual persons purely coincidental. Bill Tonkin speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.